Welcome to Sahara TV and we'd also to discuss some very interesting trendy issue uh, today is Canada based Nigerian Stephanie Otobo. Stephanie it's a pleasure having you on Sahara TV. Thank you. Uh, just on Monday you took to your Twitter handle to share some screenshots of um, your video charts with uh, Apostle Johnson Suleiman, the general overseer of Omega Fire Ministry, and that has actually trended a lot uh, this past couple of days. And uh, a lot of people are asked, yeah, you, you actually asked um, Apostle Suleiman to uh, come forward and debunk your claims. Question is, why are you doing this at this time? Well, the last time when I went to his church, right, um, he made me, I was weak. I got weak after fighting him for over a year. I got so weak and he it would always come to the court. It would always send someone to the court to let me know that I would go broke. So, and really I went broke. Four months before I went to the court, I asked Kiamu about finance. I'm like, how can, you, how can we help me raise some finance? And he promised to help me, but he didn't do anything. So I was left by myself with no help, no sponsor. Nobody was helping me. And I was flying for one year, I flew like 18 times. And Apostle Suleiman pays my friends to call immigration on me. So I was into a lot of, a lot was going on with me. You know, I was so frustrated. I needed, I just needed to get out one way or another. So he, he would always approach me to, okay, we have to settle in person that it would never go to a lawyer, that me and him have to settle in person. So when it got to the point where he, he succeedingly transferred the case from the judge, the female judge that we had, he succeedingly transferred the case from her to some other man somewhere really far. I had to give up hope because the woman was the only person that would not take bribe from him. The police were bribed. And let me just remind you that when he, when the police came to arrest me, he ordered them to collect my cell phone. So the proofs, all the proofs I had, he made sure he took it first. So I had more proofs. But he made sure that the police took my phone and they never gave it back to today. So let's just say that I'm coming back right now for as reinforcement. Like I've had time to reinforce myself based on the fact that he was using everything against me back then. And I was tired of fighting. I mean, you know, he has money more than me. Like, you know, he has money. So... And he steals the money, so he just spends it the way he likes. Like, this is what he used money for. He pays my friends to go against me. He pays some of my family members to go against me. So I was out of it fighting for over a year. I was out of it. I had to give up. And now I'm coming back because the truth has to be told. You know, I've had time to reinforce myself. And this time, I am not backing down. Like, I am not backing down. My truth will be told, and people will listen and hear. And people need to remember that Nigeria is a very corrupt country. And this man is using his power against me. Like, I don't have the connection that he has. No. Let, let me get your reaction. Um, Apostle Johnson Suleiman actually uh, said uh, his mother was actually traded uh, on the 
social media platform uh, because he asked the Nigerian government to end the ongoing uh, university lecturer strike. I mean, more or less like deflecting the, the issues. He was actually silent, specifically addressed to address the alleged uh, photographs that you posted. And he said, and I quote him, I tweeted, Ed has to strike. Yesterday, Sunday, and today, Monday, I'm trending on Twitter. Now, well done. Same strategy all the time. You guys should have done this at least a week later to avoid traces. And that's strike. Let me get your reaction to this. He's just a stupid liar. For example, for example, he called me for for settlement, right? He called, this is a man of God called me for settlement. Then I went to his church through frank someone called frank shaibu right they made they made sure like they prepared me and everything and there were soldiers with guns and intimidation and everything right he called me for certain you would not believe that he sent fake alerts of money because he promised to settle me i knew that if i go to the church my life would have you know people would have been against me but he said he was going to pay me so I can at least get myself out for a while, you know? You would not believe that this man of God, because he's such a liar, he used fake bank alert. That is how, how small he is. He is so small that he used fake bank alert. So for him to, he's just pretending that someone is after him. Nobody's after him. He's probably after himself. Nobody's after him. He's just pretending because he's a, he is a chronic liar. Apostle Johnson Suleiman is a chronic liar. He's a liar. He's, he's a thief. He's not a pastor. Talking about lying, I mean, most of our viewers are wondering, you were at the church at some point in time uh, and you made certain confessions um, stating, and I quote, you fell into the hands of powerful politicians and pastors who manipulated you uh, to fall the man of God. Those were your words. Uh, and, you know, you clearly stated it. they were all lies, um, desperation for your career. Uh, and one begins to wonder if you had actually made this confession were you first to make this confession what exactly happened and why are you changing that yeah at this point in time yeah like i said that was what i started with i was out of it i've been fighting this man for over a year he took my phone that it, as soon as the police came the first thing they asked me was my cell phone he instructed them to collect my phone. There was a time someone took my laptop in Lagos as well. I'm sure it's related to him. Every he's taking every traces. This man is is powerful, like you know. So he took it took my cell phone so I would not have proofs. I would not have proofs. He took my cell phone and he's been oppressing me since then. You know. So I've been fighting for over one year. I was so out of it. I was flying to Canada for my safety. I had to leave Canada immediately after every port. And I would fly back and forth from my own pocket. I had nothing anymore. So I had to just do whatever for my own sanity because I was really out of it, you know? Nobody was helping me. Nobody was helping me. But this man, Apostle Justice Suleiman, is paying everybody to do so for him, to help him do everything. But nobody was helping me. So I was tired. And as soon as he said he was going to pay me off, when I went to the church, he said he was going to pay me off. So that was why I went to the church and thought, okay, maybe I could get some money and just rest from all these issues but because he's a chronic liar he's not a man of god because he has been trying to kill me he's not a man of god so because he's a chronic liar he did not pay me so i had to just you know take care of myself by myself but now i'm better like i can actually talk and stand and speak for myself 
because I know that the truth will always win. The truth will always win. Now, let me ask you, this is a question I don't normally uh, want to ask. And if you don't want to answer it, uh, I totally understand. But uh, given the accusations that you have, I mean, leveled against uh, Apostle Suleiman, um, was there really a morose relationship between you and the pastor? Uh, could you give us details of what really ensued between you and Apostle Suleiman? Well, I texted him for counseling, for marriage counseling, actually. Then he turned the whole thing around and said that God sent him to me, that he, him and his wife are not together, but because of who he is, he cannot just announce the breakup until he finds someone else. And me, because I believe, I thought he was actually a pastor. So I believe him because if a normal man tells me, oh, I'm not with my wife, I would know it's a lie, but because I thought he was a man of God, right? So I actually believe when he said, oh yes, um, me and my wife are not together, but I cannot just announce it right now because, because of who I am, I need to find the woman first. So that was why I believed him and we started this relationship and I saw that things like marriage was not coming forth. I had to start breaking up with him. That was when he invited me to Lagos and he poisoned me that same day in the hotel in Lagos. He asked someone from his car, one of his boys to bring something for him. So he said it was his favorite drink. They brought the drink and he gave it to me, but I wasn't really thinking of anything. So I, I drank it. That, I, like I was passing out blood the whole time, but the team stopped. So the next day he stopped. So when he stopped, I told my friend, I called my friend in worry and I'm like, oh, I'm so scared right now, but I don't know what to do. And you know, when someone is so diabolical, they manipulate you a lot. Like I was so conditioned not to tell anybody. I couldn't say anything to anybody, but I, I was able to tell my friend. I remember even sending one of the... I wish I remember the name of the hotel. I sent one of the workers to get me some flagine or something, some medicine the next morning. So I told my friend in worry. So she said, okay, we have to go to the port to another pastor, another church in, from in worry called Free Indeed. So that was where I went there. And I told this pastor, I didn't know that they were working together. I didn't know that they were working together. So and he did not actually handle the case. He did not do anything about it. He just told me, he recorded me and gave it to Suleiman. And Suleiman, so I came back to Canada and my friends here in Canada, I also showed them the blood. Like when I came back and I passed blood out, I showed my friends here in Canada. And my friend, she was fighting for me before as soon as Suleiman paid her online, she started going against me. And this, my friend, knew everything that was happening to me. So this is how Apostle Suleiman is like manipulating everyone with money, bribing everybody to go against me, you know. So that was when I knew that something was up. That was when I started screenshotting. I, whenever he calls me, I'll screenshot the video because I wasn't saving anything before. I wasn't keeping anything against him until he poisoned me. So, and when he called me, he didn't address the issue because he said they recorded me and he told me that they blackmailed him and he had to pay someone. But he heard my voice. I was talking about him. He heard that I said it was it poisoned me, but he did not address the issue. So I started suspecting that something is going on. So I started screenshotting us. Whenever he calls me, I was screenshotting. Whenever he sends me his notes, his private part, I would save it because I started suspecting stuff was going on. I also screenshot our conversation on BBM at the time because I started like suspecting all this stuff only after he poisoned me. So 
the the other proofs that I had was on was text message from both of like back and forth text message, but he made sure that the police collected that phone from me. You know, we are dealing with a high profile chronic liar here. So he is actually calculative, is very, very calculative with his what he's doing. And he's paying people bribing his way out of like he's just bribing his way out of this. Now so, Stephanie, how uh, how has this affected you um, emotionally and uh, what's uh, has been the fiscal toll this has had on you over the past couple of years? Well, it has really damaged my image in every way because of the going back to the church and not being able to get anything out of it so I can actually, you know, clean up a little bit. But he, he like, my image is more important to me and my career also is very important to me and my family as well. You know, my mom hearing this and people like talking to her about this, not actually knowing the truth, you know, that's, that has really been affecting me. And it's hard for me to like, you know, just normally just trust because he's using my friends against me. So even make friends has been so difficult for me. So like, it's, let me, let's just say it's affected me in every way, every way. That is why I have like, but I turned everything into fire right now so I can come out and speak with my voice and actually stand my ground this time because this time he cannot intimidate me or buy his way out of the truth. The truth must always surface and win. Now, what's uh, what's the next step for you? I mean, what do you hope to achieve in the next uh, couple of weeks and months to come? Um, in addressing the concerns that you have raised because this scandal has actually plagued the church and has attracted the attention of uh, uh, nigerians uh, for them. well right now i would i hope my aim is to actually make sure people get the truth and i know a lot of people are fighting for him even people that don't even know what's happening they are fighting for him but the new, one of the reasons is because he talks about god I, I, I would advise people to actually learn about God personally so that liars and thieves like Apostle Johnson Suleiman cannot just, you know, swipe their ways into your heart. Because if you know God by yourself, you will not have to rely on a thief and a liar and a diabolical killer like Apostle Johnson Suleiman, you know. I would actually want people, I, I hope and I advise people to learn God by themselves and not rely on people like him. And also, I, I hope to clean up my image and make sure people hear the truth and know that he is not just even a, a fake prophet, he is a killer. He kills people because, you know, he's been trying to kill me. Just um last year he locked me up with a doctor called dr mali i went to nigeria for a personal thing with a in a hospital and the doctor locked me up they were going to inject me to death it was it was someone that used i don't want to call the person's name but it's also a high pro i had to call them at first they, all the people i was normal people i was calling to come help me they got there and they drove them away that i've gone crazy so this person I called came and they told him I've gone crazy. And he said, how can she go crazy? But she's talking to me on the phone. How can she go crazy? So you had to go get a police in Abuja, who said to, you had to go get a police to come get me out of there. So they were going to inject me. I had to start screaming out of my lungs. I was screaming. One of the nurses that were holding me so they would reject me she now said people have heard us scream we cannot do it tonight people have heard us scream that was the god that saved me because as soon as they walked out of the of the room i went live on instagram i went live on instagram and i was saying everything on instagram so people started calling the doctor but he made me delete that video he made me delete it immediately he said if I don't delete it, it was going to seize my phone. And my phone was all I had. 
So I had to delete it immediately. So even if I'm not talking right now, if I say, okay, let me not talk about this, let me not come out. Last year, I wasn't saying anything, but he was still coming after me. This Suleiman has gone crazy. He's always coming after me, you know? He's a, he's a crazy person. When I went to the doctor to do my own thing, I wasn't thinking about, like, I know who I am, but I wasn't expecting him to still be after me, you know? I've done everything. I went to his church and I lied on my own self. I said politicians, I don't know any politicians. There was no politician that sent me or put me up to anything. It was Frank Shaibu that works for Apostle Johnson Suleiman that told me to say that. They prepared me for this thing, intimidated me with all the soldiers, guns and armies everywhere. You know, I was so intimidated. I had to, I, even in the church, I was going to say the truth, but I know that the, the soldiers were just behind me. I didn't want anybody to shoot me because I knew he could do it. If he could poison me, he can actually do it. This man is not a pastor, you know? All right. Um beyond just uh, releasing because i mean some of the graphic contents you released uh, uh, online nude photos um you know, you talked about him changing his hairstyle you even had screenshots of uh, video conversations uh, are there any other expose say, that um, you still expect nigerians to still see beyond beyond just these photographs the nude photos that you put out there yeah, he instructed the police to collect my phone because of this. When the police came to arrest me, he instructed them to collect my phone. Until today, I still do not have my cell phone with me. Because he collected them and made sure that he, I do not have no proof of him. Like he wanted to clean every traces of him. But... Um, this, why I have this once was, you know, um, when you save your stuff on, the, uh, on iCloud, right? So even in the next how many years, I'm still going to have some stuff from before. That is the only chance, like, that is the only space I have to, of having anything right now because of iCloud. But our conversations and whatever you, anybody would expect, he just took my cell phone immediately to make sure that nothing is coming for it. Like this man is a, is a, he plants everything that he does and he just spends money to just oppress people. This is not a pastor. Right. Uh, Stephanie, finally, um, I, w we know you actually filed a lawsuit. Uh, are you still filing another lawsuit against uh, this pastor and to ensure you get justice, or are you just still going to please put this on a, a court of public opinion? I, I, well, as soon as I, because this time I don't want him to intimidate me anymore, right? Because I don't want to do anything that I will get to the middle and get broke and have to do whatever he wants. So I'm trying to see how I can actually use my voice first. Then when I get to the extent of the fact that maybe I get some support, I would actually need some support or I ask that so people support me so I can actually get justice so that Nigeria can actually see the truth. They, they can actually know the truth about this issue so that they will know the truth about this man so that they will know because if he's saying that the government are after him, if the government is actually after him, I will be suing him right now. I don't have any help. Stop. I don't have no help. There is no help from anywhere. So maybe I'm, I, right now I'm asking that please whoever contact me and if you can help me, let's get this case on so that the truth, because it's, it's a big deal it's actually a big deal, not just for me, for other people that he has done this to, and they cannot actually speak, you know, because maybe they live in Nigeria. And, you know, this is a justice for everyone, not just for me, for the whole Nigeria, because this man is going everywhere, stealing and lying and just doing whatever he likes. But that's why I'm asking, please contact me and let's put heads together and try to get justice for the whole Nigeria.